What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Fedekin Podcast. We had a special guest today, Dalia Ayub. She's been a day in the community for a long time now. She spoke a lot about her personal Islamic journey, her connection with the Quran, and also she's the CEO and founder of Life Matters Academy, which is to inspire and achieve excellence through learning through the deen. Certainly not only a podcast episode for sisters, also brothers as well. You guys can benefit a lot and I hope you guys enjoy. You know, to have, we had a conference about inner peace for sisters in Sydney and Melbourne in the last two days on the weekend. Yeah. Inner peace is, is not attained. There's a price you pay for it. Oh, wow. Okay. There's a price you mm. pay. People think, oh, it's not like a five-step towards <laughs> or seven steps program. Yeah, yeah. It's not like that. Personal development. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, subhanAllah, it's, it's, there's the thaman salam al dakhili. There's a mm. price you pay. There's an expense. And not everybody wants to pay the price. Yes, mm. And all good requires a price. If you want a million dollar house, you have to pay for it. Mm. You know, and that's dunya stuff. That Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so, yeah, as, as we were talking about from before, subhanAllah, um, one thing that Ali loves doing mm-hmm. on the start of a podcast is an icebreaker. Yeah, and ice. since there's no ice in Spain to break, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let him break the we're ice. We're right assuming now. there's ice, but yes. why are we assuming that? Either, you but know? also, you like to yeah. get from the start of the episodes, people to kind of s- figure you out from it just the start. Maybe people haven't heard your speeches yep. or yep. any of your talks. So, Bismillah. So, the first question I usually start with most of the guests is sorry to put you on the spot. It's probably <laughs> you can have some time to answer. So, if you at if you got the chance to have dinner with anybody. Dead or alive, who would it be and why? Khadija radiallahu anha. Okay. So um, I love our mother Khadija radiallahu anha so much because she is the epitome of um, women in our times and ta- she's timeless. Radiallahu anha, she is going through, she went through everything that a woman goes through nowadays in terms of she was a single mom. Mm. She was widowed twice. She was in a society where it was hard enough to be a woman, let alone, like she did not only survived that society but she thrived in that society she was she had a great relationship with Rasulullah so succeeded mm. in her marriage as a woman as a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a mother as a foster mother as a mm. businesswoman as a in all fronts she was the only one that the Rasulullah said mm. completed her faith from the four women so why would I not want to have coffee with Khadija? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she's, uh, I relate a lot, subhanAllah. She's my, I tell sisters all the time that um, we have two mothers, our biological mother and Khadija. Mm-hmm. So whenever you feel like you've got lack from your mother, or my mother did not teach me this, or she did not do that, there's a mother waiting for you in Jannah. And she's giving you, she's showing you her life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what you look up to. And that's how you live by, inshallah. Mm-hmm. So you can find absolutely everything. She had her daughter's divorce. She had illness. She was the wealthiest woman and she died out of starvation. SubhanAllah, yeah. Radiallahu anha, the wealthiest mm-hmm. woman in Quraysh at the time to die out of starvation because she gave all her wealth for the deen and to protect mm-hmm. the Muslims, early Muslims. You know, and, and she was worthy of the salam, not from the humans, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Angel Jibreel came in human form, Hadith Sahih, and he saw her walking with a pot of food or water to the Rasul, and he said, Salaamu Alaikum, how are you? She got to speak to Jibreel. Mm. SubhanAllah. And she said, he asked her, because they were actually not well at the time in terms of poverty, and he said, how are you doing? She said, Khair, alhamdulillah. Gratitude. And it was, the ulti- it was one of the hardest times in their lives, and Jibreel went to the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told him, Khadija's coming. Aqri'ha minni salam, send salams from me, Jibreel to her, وَأَقْرِئْهَا مِنَ اللَّهِ salam, And from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by name to her, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, uh, give her glad tidings of a ma- mansion in Jannah. The mansion wasn't described in terms of dunya stuff, you know, like it's big, it's got pearls, it's the description of the mansion reflects the life she had, a mansion where there's no sakhab or nasab anymore. There's no more noise there's no more tab and, and exhaustion. SubhanAllah. That was the reward for her in Jannah. So Khadija, radiallahu anha. SubhanAllah. The only thing that I'm thinking of going through my head is, how's that conversation? Like, what, what's that conversation going to be like if you were to have a seat mm. in front of you? What would it be? Because I know there's people that I've wanted to speak to in my life and I sat down and I was like, yeah. hi. How are you? You know, know all of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just buckle, I would just say, I love you and thank you and uh, forgive us and... You know, we, we've gained strength from you. Mm. We live in difficult oh. times. And as a woman, it's not easy, a Muslim woman, to be living in these crazy times that we are yeah, living in. And for us to know that we have those real giants, female yeah. giants, 
the most beloved to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ever. Into, to, the best of kind, the best of mankind, the creation. He loved her the most. So what sort of woman did she have to be to win that in his heart? So, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, I, like a lot of things you just named, subhanAllah, are things that I haven't heard of mm. in particular about a sister, uh, Khadija radiallahu anha. Mm. And like that, subhanAllah, tells me enough about how you know what I mean? Like mm. how uneducated I am as a person, yeah. subhanAllah, and the and the, the amount of like knowledge that I don't have at my fingertips yet, subhanAllah. Yeah. So yeah. And, and that's the case for most um female scholars like Khadija Dalana, she was given glad tidings about Jannah, I mean Bushareen fil Jannah. Yet in the scholar uh, scholarly books she's not mentioned as one of the ten who were granted who were given the glad tidings of Jannah. I don't know mm. why. There isn't even a book written on Khadija by herself in English. I went to Mecca and Medina because I did a course on her to find, you know, I need hmm. information, sources. Yeah. There was nothing. So you'd find Khadija in the books of many other people, like the Ummahat al Mu'minin, which is okay, but hmm. she is, she, she deserves a <laughs> research yes, and books on her own. And we would not ever give her justice no matter what we write. Yes, yes so I guess it's good we have this platform to give her flowers. You know? 100%. Like these things that you're telling us, subhanAllah, like the only thing we thought of, like even being widowed twice, I didn't even know that. By the age of 25. And she had four kids, three to four, some people say. In the I just thought she met the Prophet no, She married eight. him at 40 and he was 25 and she took him in and she was working for her mm. and, you know, she was a massive, great woman and subhanAllah, that was <coughs> married here with nothing but he was able to, that's a thing as well, we can get into another topic here. Yeah, no worries, yeah. His ability for, for them to have this amazing marriage was only because, like, she was a great woman. She was, you know, she, in, in our where she ticked all the boxes. Mm. She was a massive woman in terms of lineage, in terms of wealth, in terms of status, in terms of ilm. She used to she used to write and read in a time where not many women were writing and reading. Mm. And the Rasul being 25 years old, much younger than her, single man, poor, working for her. He actually moved into her house when he got married to her. Mm. He worked for her. And nowadays this is not conventional. Not a high, <laughs> not not a high value. No, no, yeah. exactly. But yeah. it takes a very big man to be able to embrace a big woman. So that reflects his own. He had no insecurities and he had Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So only mm. a great man can actually be married to a great woman. SubhanAllah. That's, you know what's funny? Because we had a podcast where we spoke about, um, for example, the, do you remember, do we overly prioritize marriage? Yeah, yeah of course. SubhanAllah. <laughs> me, I answered, and th this, this kind of thing shows me how, in comparison to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we're nothing, you know? Of course. And subhanAllah, I, would, I think one of the brothers asked as a hypothetical, would you marry someone who's divorced, has kids and so on and so forth? I said, I'm not man enough to do that. Mm. And subhanAllah, and I, I, you look at, for example, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's like, the, why don't we take the example of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know what I mean? In those situations, in those He's moments. our standard, he's our measure. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like and I this all, Ya Rab. It's, 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 I feel like there's something we don't see, mm. you know? Like yeah. something that the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could see that we couldn't, uh, yeah, subhanAllah. It, it's just us as human beings, we're all flawed, subhanAllah. That's true. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. I mean. Um, I think there's something that you, you had mentioned, I think, in, in regards to when you were speaking a little bit about Khadija that I, I, I'm pretty curious about. And it was, you're talking about how the way there's tests that sisters have this day and age mm. that she... She went through all of them. You know what I mean? So yeah. is it okay if you just develop on of a course. couple of them? Yeah, yeah. Being a single mum in the times that we are living in, some women are married and they are living like single because they've got no support from the spouse. Sisters are going through... Um, women at the time of Khadija, the Lord, and who were buried alive. We still bury women alive in our heads, you know, with oh. no spaces in mm. so many organizations and um, things happen all the time. You know, I've been da'wah for more than 20 years. I've seen it all. It's not like we're speaking out of... Um, anger or we're just imagining things and yeah. you know things are not right subhanallah so we are living in similar times as well um, there's corruption there's fitan there's the times that she was living in there was you know people were just doing the wrong thing they were doing tawaf around the Kaaba naked and people were uh, you know extremely oppressive to each other and there was tribal wars and there was it was really hard mm. <laughs> it was a really hard time and for her to be able to thrive in that time and st you know st stay firm on her values and her beliefs and, and, and make something out of that, that's not easy at all. Mm. That's not easy at all, subhanAllah. And she was able to do that. And as women, as Muslim women, particularly in a non-Muslim society, it's it's very hard where we're, you know, visibly Muslim. You guys mm. can get away with, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, honestly, it's for us, we're yeah. like wearing the flags of Islam, I tell sisters, like whether yeah. we, wanna, we want that role or that burden, because it is a burden for some people. Like, I'm just a human being. Why do I have to be the representative of Islam? I'm not, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, but you are. By the fact that we are visibly Muslim with the hijab. Yeah. Yes, I can understand why it's a daunting thing, especially for sisters 
Yeah. It's not a daunting thing. I think um, it is if it could, or be so, it, could yeah. it can be. Uh, yeah, My for apologies. some sisters it can be. Um, yeah. But again, uh, twenty years ago when I wore hijab, it's not like how I feel about hijab now. Uh, it's not easy. It's a journey. Mm. So yeah. we have to acknowledge and validate the experiences of all sisters yeah. because I know it takes it guts and courage to be able to show yourself up in the world like that. Yeah. So and everybody's on their different journeys. Subhanallah. Yeah, subhanallah. It's something I can relate to because I even think to myself like if the closest thing I could get, which is not even close, is wearing a thobe every day as a guy. Oh, yeah, even that's hard for us yeah. doing the West. Yeah. Imagine wearing a scarf every day. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know. And that's people we living in a society. It's that's what they look at, like your yeah. image. Yeah. And they instantly create. All these stories about you without even talking to you. Yeah, yeah. By just how what you're dressed like, what you wear like, and that's it. They put you in a box. <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And we, we we know that in society now everything's superficial. Everything's yeah. cosmopolitan. Is it cosmopolitan? No, cosmetic. Everything's cosmetic. Everything's on the outside. Superficial, fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Everybody's wearing masks. And I can, uh, yeah, wallah, and I, and I know that you do. And I think Ali had had this in the spine. Subhanallah, I just remembered it now. Um, that statement: everybody's wearing masks. Mm. What exactly is it? If you could develop on that. Um, we're living in the social media world. Um, people are trying to fill a lot of voids that they have inside with dunya stuff. And um, nobody's really sharing how they are truly feeling, what's really, really going on. Um, it's as if we have to pretend, everybody's pretending to be someone that they are not. We show 1% of our true lives on social media. We mm. choose that one perfect photo, one that, that perfect moment. Um, wh whatever we're doing, subhanAllah, it's not the reality. So it's everybody's wearing those masks because mm. it's scary to be who you are in this world, especially as a believer. Yep. And it's safer to just conform sometimes and just pretend like it's okay, even when it's not. And that's something that is sad because it, the outcome of that is most people are not fulfilled and they're not content. Um, so it takes you know, a lot of resilience. It takes a lot of um, foundation in your faith mm. to show up in the world as you're supposed to, with that fear of anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, cutting that tie between the creation and the creator, like n having no, it's just everything I do, everything I say, everything I live for Allah, it's easier said than done, and everybody says that, but are we truly living that? Yeah. Hmm. Because if it was truly the case, you wouldn't care about what people think and what people say, and so you would show up in the world with who, as you are, yeah. hmm. rather than who people want to see. Hmm. And that's very few people are able to do that. Definitely. And w what would your advice be for someone who wants to step out in, into the world as themselves and really take that mask off? Mm. Because I feel like if somebody is to master it, subhanAllah, I think mm. you're probably the best. Allahu alam. I'm still trying. I'm not yeah. having, there's no reaching in this dunya. That's yeah. the thing. People think that you get there. There's a goal, there's yeah. no, it's not a goal to be reached. It's just a life to live until mm. you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And that's the case with most of all our ibadat. Like, the, you know, look at what Allah asks us to do. Even the pillars, it's you continuously do it. Mm. You don't get to a stage where you say, I've done salah. Like, you keep praying until you die. If you even in your bed and you're dying, you pray with your eyes if you can't get up, subhanAllah. So for you to be able to do that, it takes strength. Mm. And that strength comes from the source of strength. Who is the source of strength? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're relying on feeling that, it's like a jug that you're filling. And, you know, we all have, I like to always give the example that we are jugs and we are vessels that we are pouring into everybody else's and work, studies, community work. Who is filling you? How are you refilling? Mm. And if that refill is not Allah, you're going to struggle. Mm. You're not going to have the strength. And some people do fill it with other things than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it doesn't work. It's not going to get you far or further. It's like you have an empty tank in your car. You know, you have to fill it up with fuel, petrol. You can fill it up with orange juice, but it's not <laughs> It's yeah. not going to get you... It's not what you need. No. And a lot of people do that. They're filling their jugs with the wrong things. Mm. And they think it's going to work, but it doesn't. And it just really makes them feel worse and um, demotivated and weakened. You know, the source mm. of strength is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, period. So, I, you know, we all need to seek our strength from Him. That's yes. the way to go for us to continue mm. so that we can show up in the world with that fear of judgment and because people fear judgment shaming yeah. you know this we're scared the mm, reasons why we do the things we do because i don't want them to think this way about me i don't want that person to be to look at me that way if you cut that you cut that like you cut the creation mm. and i don't i'm not here to make you feel comfortable or to make you pleased or to serve you because mm. i wasn't created for that yeah. i'm created for a purpose which is to worship my creator mm. and to serve on earth and that's what I'm going to be focused on. So the lens, the worldview, the interactions, they all change. They all just, there's a massive shift happens. And it's not easy, obviously, continuously, you know, being able to do that. Yep. But again, 
filling the jug every day because you empty, you need to refill from that source. Yeah, mm. definitely. And uh, I'm guessing the best way to fill that tank would be through the Quran, subhanAllah, yeah? Without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so I know you want to talk a little bit about yes. that, subhanAllah. Yeah. And um, we'll, t- we'll touch on female scholarship after this, inshallah. But um, just let us know a little bit about why it is important or how, for example, that petrol tank can only be filled from the words of Allah, subhanAllah, yeah. and so on. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sent this message, the first thing was Iqra, was Qur'an. And for the first 13 years in Islam, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all he did and all he taught and all he advocated was from the Qur'an. The Sahaba, the giants like Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu and Ali ibn Abi Talib, they used to all gather in a small house called Dar al-Arqam, the house of al-Arqam. Al-Arqam was a 16-year-old young man. And they, they chose to gather in his house because he, he wasn't suspicious. Like his parents weren't Muslim at the time. Mm. So they were, you know, hiding from the Quraysh because they were persecuted if you were to do that. So his house was for many, many years a space where they learned knowledge. And what did the Rasul teach them? He didn't teach them anything but the Quran. Mm. There was nothing. We start with everything but the Quran. In our halaqat, sometimes, in our gatherings, the Quran is the source of all knowledge. Mm. All knowledge. And you will find absolutely everything in it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so in the Quran in numerous verses. So we try to look at, you know, other... All knowledge comes from the Quran. So it has to be the starting point. And unfortunately, we have distanced ourselves from the Quran so many ways. Um, and uh, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith sahih that towards the end of times, the person who's holding on to their faith will be holding li- on to like hot coal. Yeah. And it's, so it's mm-hmm. going to be really hard to practice this fitan. You know, everything we stand for in our deen, it, you know, the opposite is, is being taught and being, mm. uh, you know, pushed, yeah. pushed. Opposite, totally the opposite, subhanAllah. So the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, and I love the Sahaba because they asked all those questions for us, by the way. So may Allah reward mm. them. Because mm. <laughs> they're not living at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So they would always ask, okay, what do we do, Ya Rasulullah? If we were living in those times where it really feels like, you know, nowadays you make an opinion that it's based on the Quran and Sunnah and it's as if you've left Islam. <laughs> yeah. from the, People attack you. Because their their mechanism of making decisions is not the deen, mm. the foundation. So that's something that we need to emphasize. If you if I say something against feminism, you know, women should stay home. Women should stay home, and that's something I said recently. Everybody lost it, subhanallah. If they mm. can, if they fight, because Islamically, financially, a woman is not responsible to, you know, in an ideal Islamic. <laughs> yeah. Society that is, yeah. and everybody's like no because the mechanism we call it aliyat al niqash we call it the mechanism of making decisions. If your foundation is not based on the Quran and Sunnah, of course you're gonna find this as yeah. oh my goodness, this is an extreme. This is judging. This is shaming. This is um, all these things. You Can, know, uh, counter feminism or counter productivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah because that's not what's being. That's not what's out there. Yeah, that that you know you're saying something opposite to the. Uh, uh, the norm. Yeah, your so foundation is not clear. You fi- so you need to understand wi- wh- which lens. Where are you speaking from? Yeah. What are we speaking from? Mm. It's like yeah, you using the ru- are you using the ruler of the dean or are you using the ruler exactly. of something else to measure. Yeah, mm. and because success, if that was yeah. the case, then a lot of the stuff that Rasul Sallam said would trigger mm. people, so, so, no, yeah, and definitely. they will find it like you know people are not ready. But because they're not filling their jugs with the Quran, they're mm. filling it with everything else. And there's nothing wrong with learning other things and going through you know academia and going to university and learn. Take the good that is in line with our faith, that yeah. is in line with the Quran, and then leave what's not good. Yeah. Mm. So that has to be our measure. That has to be our standard. So the Rasul said in the hadith, you know, these times, and I do believe that we are living in those times. I'm not sure about yeah. you guys, how you feel I, I <laughs> about dunya. Yeah. We are living to what in the end of times. Without a doubt. Yeah. You know, there's mm. all the signs are out. The small signs. There's only like one death or two, some scholars say. Mm. SubhanAllah, may Allah protect us all. So oh Rasul said, the Sahaba asked, what is the solution? What do we do in these times? It's scary. The Rasul said, um, in, 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 if that's the case, hold on to my Quran and my Sunnah. That's your rope. Mm. That's the rope that will save you. Because that's exactly how it feels like sometimes. You're like in the ocean, you're trying to, you're drowning, and imagine there's a rope that comes from the heavens down. That's the rope of Allah, Hablullah. Allah speaks about, وَعْتَصِيمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ Hold firmly to Allah's rope. Subhan because Allah. without it, you're going to die. You can't. You can't even survive. Mm. So that's the only line of being saved in this dunya and in the hereafter. So we have to always oh, start with the Quran and um, yeah that's where we start and we will end inshallah yeah I would like to know so just so the listeners can relate to you before giving um, getting some advice of you and also your academy I want to know where your journey started with the Quran and how that came about and how that was developed over time 
Okay, so it actually started with halaqat here in Melbourne. Okay. Because I used Allah. to live in Melbourne before. Awesome. Yeah, I did for eight years. Um, I got married um, in New Zealand. I'm Palestinian background, so we're everywhere around the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And we keep moving. <laughs> um, alhamdulillah. Uh, so I was uh, I was born in Kuwait. And then at the Gulf War, I moved to Jordan. From Jordan, we migrated when I was 11 to New Zealand. New Zealand went to uni, got married, moved with my husband. He, had, you know, he, had, he got a job. He had to work in uh, rural Victoria. Mm-hmm. In Chuka, out of four places. Where oh, Chuka is? Yeah. I hated it, Chuka. <laughs> with, the many, the only, w- with the many Muslims? I there? was the only one. Subhanallah. In the whole town. <laughs> How many people were there? Do you know? There's like a five, seven thousand. Uh, when, I, when I was there, that was yeah. like 17, 18 years ago. Um, I gave birth there to my daughter and lived so there on my own. And anyway, ham- don't take me back, please, so to that time. I was the only Muslim in town. And there was like, wasn't even just that. It was just, there was nothing in a Chuka, like not even a shopping center. So oh, when I used to oh get bored, I'd be like to my husband, take me to Coles. He's like, why? Do we need anything? <laughs> no, I just want to go like out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go somewhere. So that was Echuca. So yeah. I actually started um, after moving from Echuca, rural Victoria, living there for two years, um, to Melbourne. And um, we had just moved. And one of the sisters, um, Asma, Alizil Khair, she's a seals mom. Oh, okay, yeah, she kind of threw me into halaqat. She said, Dali, you have to run a halaqat for the girls in the masjid. I'm like, I'm not a scholar. I don't know anything about, like, I don't have knowledge. Because yeah. that's what all of us think. But yeah. Abu Bakr, so we kind of, the shaitan doesn't want us to do good. Mm. What do you know? Who are you to be teaching? The, uh, Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, in his first week of becoming Muslim, So what did Abu Bakr know in the first week of becoming Muslim? Like, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. We all know that. Seven out of the ten mubashireen fil jannah, he invited to Islam. Just with La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. SubhanAllah, yeah, I didn't know that. (laughs) First week, we know more than that. And we have imposters. And we're like, uh -uh." (laughs) uh-uh. You know, know, shaitan doesn't want us to do good. With whatever you have, you can just, وَلِّغُ عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةِ The Rasul said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, You know, uh, uh, spread and share and preach even one ayah. You can all do that. Hmm. So, alhamdulillah, I mean, she pushed me through that. And we, you know, that's how we started just giving halaqat to uh, girls in Altona Masjid, the old one. There was a room before they built the... Uh, Newport? Newport. Yeah, that's where I grew up. Really? Yeah, that I was there, yeah, <laughs> 18 years ago. And from there on, subhanallah, I just got attached to the da'wah because you're the first beneficiary. Hmm. You're, the fir- the, you're the one who learns. You're not teaching. You're the student. I had to go back and Asil was telling me today in the lunch that we had, I remember he used to bring, because Asil used to be in my halaqa, mm. I remember he used to bring a lot of notes and write. I was like, I used to prepare for two weeks and you guys never listened. Oh, <laughs> I would come in and they're like, they're talking about shoes. And <laughs> <laughs> it was a really challenging halaqa. Like, yes. you know, they were like, I'm too cool for school. Like, th- you know, yeah, that is yeah. and all their That's parents, I pushed them to go to this halaqa. So it was really tough. I used to come back home and cry. And my husband would be like, oh. why are you doing this? You know, if you're doing it for Allah, who cares if they're listening or not? It was oh, hard. So. Yeah. And then subhanallah, you know, my journey continued. And um, yeah, I haven't, I've been, you know, halaqat, I'm, I'm an advocate for halaqas. So I've been attending a halaqa and giving a halaqa for the past 20 years. Oh. And if mm. people say, yeah, you can do, I've got a master's in Islamic studies, I'm doing my PhD in Ulum Al-Quran. So structure, academia, university, that's all good. Yeah. But you need the sharia, your own learning, your mm. own reading books of scholars. You listening to good lectures, attending classes, talking about the knowledge that you're learning. So that's how it starts for you to be attached to those circles of light, I call them. Circles where the malaika are sitting with you in those circles. The angels. Mm. You know, in a hadith sahih, whoever sits in a gathering and they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels. يحفوهم الملائكة. And even if you walk out with not knowing anything, let's say you went there to sleep or eat the snacks, because well, this is what we used to do when yeah. we were young. We go to a halqa for the food. <laughs> <laughs> even if that, yeah. if even the intention is not for Allah to learn, هم القوم لا يشقى جليسهم. The Rasul said, "They are the people. Mm. Just being around those people, the minute you walk out of, the, of those doors, Allah forgives your sins, just because uh-huh. you were with these people. So just to go to a halqa ilm, even if you don't learn anything, just yeah. stay with those people." Stay on that path. Stay on this path of knowledge because we need to do that, especially in the times that we are living in. Definitely. I think there's something that I can speak to because I struggled with it for a long time and I'm going to continue to struggle with it because I think it's something that everybody does. Uh, it's it's doing things and not feeling, mm. you know what I mean? Not feeling, not feeling that iman and so on and so forth. Yeah. And as you were saying, subhanAllah, if you just rock up, rock up. You know what I mean? Um, this is something that you're not going to feel straight away. And Allah wants to know the sincere from the insincere. Mm. Because this is the best thing ever. This is the most precious thing. The Rasul said, I love nothing in dunya. One of the things he loves is dhikrullah, halqat al dhikr. Um, and this is the most precious thing is not going to be given to anyone. Mm. Allah has to see that you're sincere. You know, khushu' in salah is not going to be given to anyone. Allah has to see that you've done jihad. 
Otherwise, mm. everybody would get it. You know, to have we had a conference about inner peace for sisters in Sydney and Melbourne in the last two days on the weekend. Yeah. Inner peace is, is not attained. There's a price you pay for it. Oh wow! Okay. There's a price you mm. pay. People think, oh, it's not like a five step towards <laughs> or seven steps program. Yeah, yeah. It's not like that. Personal development. Yeah, <laughs> it, you know, Subhanallah. It's it's there's the thaman salam al dakhli. There's a mm. price you pay. There's an expense. And not everybody wants to pay the price. Yes, mm. And all good it requires a price. If you want a million dollar house, you have to pay for it. Mm. You know, and that's dunya stuff that's going to go. What about this inner peace? What about this connection? What about this khushur? What about this feeling of it? There's a price you need to pay. I remember mm. there's a scholar. I think there's a story of a scholar who took him 35 years to attain khushur or yeah, something Yeah, yeah. He like said, that. I struggled oh. for the first 20 years in my khushur and I enjoyed it the next 20 years. Yeah, yeah. That's Sincerity. Allah has to see that in you. Mm. So yeah. it's not about reaching. We, we were so focused on the goal we want to get there we want to mm. reach we forget that it's all about the journey yeah and the journey should be forever ending and the goal there's no arrival here in dunya arrivals mm. in the hereafter khadija radiallahu anha going back to khadija she did not arrive here there was actually no fruits to her labor here she didn't see any of it oh, oh yeah they lived oh, her entire oh. life supporting the rasul paying for bodyguards for him to be protected from Quraysh to kill him Actually. and then she died when this islam was still like they're being persecuted her best mm. friend sumayya was killed in a horrible way she saw the muslim the children starving she did not see the glory she did not see fath makkah she didn't subhanallah yeah she yeah. Uh, you know that all happened afterwards that all happened afterwards when they went to medina but it's not about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her the, the, the her, she arrived in the hereafter. Mm. So do not be fixated or we live in a world where everybody just wants to arrive and wants to reach and wants to re achieve their goals. I actually think the worst goals are the ones that you can achieve. Because mm. mm, there's an end point and then yeah. after that. And, and, then the, and that's what happens to people, you know. And I see that in my sisters in my age, you know, usually <coughs> even brothers at the ages of 40, 50, okay, I've done it, I've done it or what's next? I've got the job, I've got the house, I've got the car, I've got the family, I've got the kids. So actually feeling that emptiness can come from both achieving your goal and not achieving your goal. Yeah. Mm. So don't make it about the goal. Don't make it about here. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's very, very um, limited. What I find in interesting as well is that like people from their past experience, even from high school or even after high school university, they can they tend to label themselves in the type of student they are. Oh, I can't learn this. It takes me a while. Like, I, c I can't learn about my dean. It's too difficult. They get to certain ages, even people my age, mm -hmm. some of my friends till this day, they don't even put an actual like genuine effort of learning the deen because they they put all these labels on themselves like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. Mm. Where, does it, where do you think that comes from? Do that comes from our own limiting beliefs about how, is, how we get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Fortunately, we've all been conditioned and raised and society in a, like this is the way to Allah and there's no other way to Allah. You know, you all have to, f this is the path of scholarship, of becoming a sheikh or becoming somebody who's connected to the deen. And that's not the case at all. You know, if we're reflecting on the stories of the Sahaba, I often ask sisters, what is the common thing about the Sahaba they all had in common? And they start thinking this and that. They had nothing in common. <laughs> oh, yeah. They actually had nothing in common. Yani Abu Bakr was totally different from Umar, mm. from uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. They had nothing in common. They just, they were doing themselves. They just... Their strengths, they capitalized on that. Mm. Yeah. So there isn't, a, we tend to put a box, like yeah. we create a box that you have to fit in and if you're not fitting into that box, so they feel like, I can't do that, that's not me. Mm. But you're not supposed to be doing it this way anyway. It's supposed to be bringing you fulfillment and contentment and joy, mm. tapping into your own strengths. There's in, in Deen, <coughs> Sharia, for example, it's about that you can do da'wah, you can get into the fiqh aspect, you can get into the aqidah, you can get Quran, hadith. So many areas, and I'm sure every person can find an area where they're interested in. Subhanallah. Mm. Mm. Yes, subhanallah. And I'm thinking now, I know it's very easily accessible for brothers, mm. you know. And and from before we were discussing how you were on your journey, subhanallah, to learning, and you learned majority of your studies were here in yep. Australia over Zoom and yep. so on. Um, is it okay if you just develop on a little bit, just in case the sisters that are watching they actually want to go yep. down that path, subhanallah? Yeah. So basically, I did my th this formal and informal, you know, training. So as I mentioned, I would always say that the halaqas are the number one source of knowledge. You have to be part of a halaqa. You, if you don't have one, you have to create one. We were talking about that in the sister's mm -hmm. lunch, subhanAllah, before, because, you know, ilm is that. And you know, I've had my halaqa in Sydney for the past 10 years now. I've had, I've had the same students for 10 years. Mashallah. So, you know, um, ilm is like this. It's never ending. You don't just finish it. Mm. No finishing mm. And the more you learn The more you realize Like I know nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's actually really humbling To see Ya Allah At the ulama And what they've You know Like a Suyuti's One of the Suyuti's Tafsir books 
one person summarized it and it was 27 volumes. Can you imagine the that. ilm? That, so, like, <laughs> so you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> yeah. It's a one mufti in the lecture, and I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So what their ilm yeah. is, is ne- like, we can't even compare the mm-hmm. ocean of ilm. Mm-hmm. That there is, and it's just really beautiful, subhanAllah. So, halaqat and just having that attitude of being a learner for life is crucial. Crucial. Mm-hmm. Because the minute you realize, you, f- you feel like I've learned or I'm there, you know, you've got it wrong. So, definitely, halaqat I've did, I did my uh, master's in Islamic studies through Charles Sturt University. They have a course. Of course, um, it was good, gave me the structure, but again, it's not the, the knowledge. Like, it's, yeah. you know, most shuyukh would tell you that it's not the university degree. You have mm. to go at the feet of ulama and learn. Okay. Um, I'm doing now my um, PhD in Ulum al-Quran and Tafsir through al Madina University in Malaysia, um, which is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing a research on the women personalities in the Quran okay. and how um, we can revive the women through understanding who they, these women are yeah. in the Quran. So, alhamdulillah, there is uh, some online options that we have. Some people choose to go overseas and study and you know, in Egypt, in Yemen, in Jordan, in Qatar. So we just have to be sincere about that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors. But start with the halaqa here. Like don't say I want to go travel and do, yeah. <laughs> you know, become a student of knowledge and then disrupt all my household. That's not how it works. Everything mm. happens in the right time. Mm. But Allah, work with what you have now and here. Yeah. You know, what's in your control? What what time? What You know, like when I was living, you know, mentioning to you brothers about Ichuka, when I lived in Ichuka, I remember for the first year, I, w- I became depressed. I was like, oh, no. like it was really hard because there was no one. And I came from a big family. My grandparents were living with us in New mm. Zealand. My auntie, we're a family of five. And suddenly to go from that to... <laughs> How you going, mate? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. It was, li- and subhanAllah, first she was horrible. And I used to keep saying to my husband, can't wait till we're out of here. And, but then I had like, you know, one of those aha moments. They called them like, what if this is my last year? Yeah. Like, do I guarantee that I'm gonna this year is I'm gonna live another year? Mm. I just have to do with what I have, and I have to yeah. live the best I can in this year because I don't guarantee that I'm gonna live another year. Yeah. So I actually I'm not sure if you guys remember those satellite dishes that you know the 20 years ago. Oh yeah, definitely. The Arabic. So we, we bought one, and there was like three, four channels, Islamic channels on that one. Yeah. <laughs> and wallahi, I, and I'm again, I, I'm, I haven't shared this publicly maybe before, maybe once. Because the idea is to inshallah benefit other people, and I used to put is I used to listen to at least six lectures a day. Oh wow! I would just have a play in the background. I had no Islamic knowledge, and I had two kids under two. That's all I had. So whatever I would just take, khalas, whatever I could hear, I would absorb. Some of it was you know I couldn't hear because the kids were screaming or crying. <laughs> Subhanallah! And I used to do the housework, but in the back, you know, background. The background music was lectures. Yes. Mm. Listening to at least four to six hours every single day for a whole year. Mm-hmm. You know, we we didn't have phones, we didn't have YouTube, I don't have yeah. WhatsApp. There was not none of that. Mm. You know, Subhanallah. So it was just that. And now we do. You know, if you just decide that I'm going to be listening to a scholar a day, a lecture for thirty minutes, start there. Yeah. You know, you, know, you can put excuses or you can put action, and it's easy to just say I can't when. Just use what you have. I guess we have so much, subhanAllah, we now. Do. Like, I, I trip out, subhanAllah. I remember when I was in year 12, which is what? Allahumma barik. Eight <laughs> years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. SubhanAllah, I was thinking about it. I was like, I was looking for a dua for studying for my mm. exams for year 12. And I was buckling because I'm like, yeah, there's only one guy on the internet that has this video. Yeah. And SubhanAllah, now you look at it, there's about so many. 15 different you guys. You can invite any scholar in your home. I always yeah, say that invite. You know, Omar Abdul Kafi, Sheikh Ratib bin Nabulsi, Sheikh Yasser Qadi. There's so many. What a privilege. Endless. With a cl- click of a button, you can have and listen about absolutely anything. Yeah. Wh- where's the excuse? Definitely. Yeah. And I'm guessing, sorry. But no, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm just, I'm just thinking about it because I remember listening to a lecture myself. And in the lecture, the, the, the brother was saying, this, these lectures and these things are a motivation. They're a spark. For greater purpose, yes, you're supposed to not think the lecture itself is the ju- is the is the, it's the seed. It's the seed. You exactly. have to water the seed and look yeah. after mm-hmm. the seed every single day until it grows and it fruits and yeah, uh, just the seed. It's not ilm, yeah. You yeah, can't get definitely. ilm from lectures online. <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So if, for example, a sister's already in or a brother's already in a halaqa mm. and they're doing the things where they're listening to the lectures and mm. so on and so forth, what would be that next jump or that next step to kind of like advance? Uh, putting into action what I'm learning. Because there's a massive difference between knowledge and beneficial knowledge. Mm. It's not about collecting. It's we're not collecting. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's not a museum of uh, I know this and you know what I mean. Subhanallah. It's so important that how much of that knowledge are you putting into action? Like Abu Bakr with La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, he went with that and he brought other people. 
you need to use what Allah has given you and just put it into action. The best of knowledge is beneficial knowledge. Ilm nafi', not just ilm. We don't want to be just attached to the idea of ilm and knowledge and that's all I want and, you know, why? SubhanAllah. Mm. We need to put that ilm into action and like you brothers, mashallah, podcasts, t- you know, community work, do th- be engaged. Mm. Community, mm. the ummah needs every single person right now. Every single person. We are created in the right time. Allah put us now for a purpose. And Allah has given you whatever he has given you to see what are you going to do with that, subhanAllah. But unfortunately, um, uh, we just need to reflect on those things and the blessings that he has given us and put yeah. them into good use, inshallah. Definitely, mm. inshallah. Um, I think we wanted to switch gears and talk a little bit about the Life Matters Academy, yeah? Yeah. And um, so what was the what was the founding idea behind it and, and like how are you going to continue that? As we'll talk about later on while you're overseas in Turkey, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Um, so Life Matters Academy has always been uh, a dream, you could say, subhanAllah, because I, I I, go by the philosophy that if I need something and it's not out there, I make it for myself and others. Um, instead of just saying, why don't they have that for us? Why be, the don't change, they do? <laughs> yeah, be the change you want yeah, to see. You know, exactly, why yeah. don't you, like, uh, for, I'll give you an example. Like, I wanted to do tafsir of the entire Quran from cover to cover. I'm like, you can't be in... Muslim and not understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words you know especially mm. in da'wah like we don't understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words mm. so um, I looked even in Sydney there was no one doing Quran tafsir of the entire Quran at least once in our lives we have to understand what each verse means there wasn't that course so I spoke to a sheikh a scholar um, in, in Quran ulim al-Quran sheikh Mu'tasim Allah yazil khair I um, suggested the idea he loved it I created the course we had 25 people graduate after two and a half years We've done the tafsir of the entire Quran from cover to cover. So just taking initiative, just mm-hmm. having that, you know, I could say, ah, oh, there's none, of, I don't, there isn't what I need out there. So yeah. whatever you need, make it happen for mm-hmm. yourself and others. And that's good. You take a hasanat for judgment day, inshallah. May Allah accept. So similarly mm-hmm. with Life Matters, I just felt in Sydney there wasn't a space for women where they could just come from all walks of life. My main idea in Life Matters is that it's not associated with any ideology, any group, any organization. Because I worked with a lot of Muslim organizations before and I felt like there's positives and there's negatives of that. The mm. positives is, alhamdulillah, you're working with the jama'ah and that's important. The negatives, only the people in the jama'ah come and attend the stuff that you run. <laughs> yeah. mm. You know, so they run a halaqa, they run a class and it's only the same people yeah. that come. No one from another group comes. You know, the Salafis do not go and to the Hizb al-Tahriri's masjids, the Sufis do not come to... I didn't like that because mm. I don't think we can... We, we can't afford to be divided this way. Definitely. Especially in this time. I respect everybody's, you know, ideologies and organizations, and it's amazing. But the youth don't need that right now. Yeah, definitely, you know, like people don't even know Islam. Like they're like new Muslims now in the West. L- you know, for us to be imposing or suggesting those things indirectly or directly. So I wanted to create a space where women can come in, mainly for sisters, where they can learn their deen in a safe environment, work on themselves, try to attain their potential. Um, uh, I focused on marriage, we focused on parenting, we focused on time management, yep. and of course the dean, for you to be able to uh, become like a whole well person from the inside out. Okay, yeah. So that was the purpose of it. Alhamdulillah, yes, alhamdulillah. ever since then we've been, yeah, uh, awesome. you know, we had. Uh, By the way, guys, there's 80% of you guys who watch our videos are actually not subscribed. So <laughs> stop the video right here. <laughs> My voice cut out. Stop the video right here. Subscribe. I'll give him a second. Now we can resume the video. Enjoy. The actual headquarters space, but we had to close it down in uh, COVID. Okay. It's too expensive to continue running it because we could not have actual people yeah. coming in. So everything, and it was khair, subhanAllah, especially with the hijra now to Turkey, yeah. that I just turned, you know, redirected to online. So mm. that has been good for the last three years as well. So alhamdulillah. Oh, that's Allah. awesome. Mm. So you're going to continue the, 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 the organization from overseas, inshallah? Inshallah. So I'm doing mentoring program for sisters twice a year, online workshops. I've been doing that for the last few years now. Mm-hmm. So that will continue, inshallah, yeah. And inshallah, we'll put those links below, inshallah, exactly. just so, yep. so we can uh, make sure that any sister... Take a break now, though. I need six months off just solo. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. We need yeah, that khulwa as well, which is very, very important Definitely. to have that time off and disconnect and just sit with yourself. And I think a lot of us don't do that as well. Yeah. Mm. You know, that connection, that source of strength requires that you do that. Step away, just slow down and you know put mm. down the volume of the outside world yep. to hear your own inner voice. Yes. I'm really curious about that because it's. I feel like we live in such a distracted world these days. How do you begin that journey? It's very difficult to begin that journey. Some people don't even know 
Where exactly. to start? Yeah. It really? starts with looking at your phone and looking at the screen time. And if you're doing 10 <laughs> hours to do five, honestly. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how it starts with that. Because what's the first thing we wake up in the morning? We do oh the yeah, last thing. Fine. If we people say I don't have time for the Quran, but I'm like, look at your screen time. Mm. <laughs> people don't <laughs> recognize not, these things. Yeah. yeah, like it's just simple things. It's just real. Subhanallah. Mm. You know, if you're doing seven hours on your phone, I'm sure you can do twenty minutes in the Quran. So it's about priorities. <coughs> mm. um, I honestly think we all have the answers inside of us. I actually don't think you need to go and ask a sheikh or anything about any. You, you're the expert in your life. Yeah. You just I have agree. to kind of slow down. You know, have solo time. Solo time doesn't have to be uh, a week, two weeks retreat on your own somewhere in Bali to meditate. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That's just become the thing now. You know, yes. subhanAllah. It could be on your sajjad salah, on your prayer mat. Just put everything away. Close the doors and just say, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to sit with my thoughts. And I'm going to sit with myself. Yeah. And I'm just going to allow whatever, subhanAllah, um, take it from there. But people don't do that. Yeah. We're living in such a noisy world, and mm. going back to the example of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just before the da'wah, he used to do, he used to go do uh, 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 you know Ghar Hira, cave mm. of uh, Hira, because Mecca at the time was too noisy. Mm. <laughs> 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 and I reflect on that. Like there were no lights after sunset. Yeah. <laughs> there were no phones. Their houses did not have a thousand cushions on the couch. <laughs> Where, where's the distraction? Where's the chaos? Hmm. That was noisy for the Rasul. So the fitra, yeah. it was, yeah, the fitra did, cannot do that. Yeah. The fitra salima, the fitra, if we truly were to tap into our fitra, it's too much. And that's why there's increased anxiety and stress and everybody's panicking and it's chaotic and you yeah. wake up in the morning, you sleep at night, where's the day gone? It, we're just running, running, running. We need hmm. to pause yeah. and, and give ourselves that time to just look inwards and just sit and People think of it as doing nothing. It's not doing nothing. Yeah. When you're sitting with yourselves and your thoughts and you're reflecting on where have I been? Where am I now? Where am I going? Mm. Uh, is it the right path? Do I need to redirect my, you know, just have that time and you'll be amazed at what comes up, subhanAllah. And mm. Allah will, will guide you. Is that a regular thing that you do on your own? I do. Yeah. Recently, I'm able to do that. So I'm not going to. So nowadays, I do a week on my own. I disconnect from everything. I go away, actually, alhamdulillah, for a week. Um, I lock myself up in a room, hotel room, and um, nothing no phone, no internet, no social media, no talking to anyone. Yeah. How is that for the first 24 hours? Uh, the first 24 hours are the hardest. The first yeah, 48 hours are the hardest because I like to give the analogy of think of yourself as, you know, the helicopter when, you know, that thing, what is it called? The, the propellers, yeah. Yeah. So even when it lands, the helicopter lands, mm. and it's still it's it still spins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even if you turn off the engine, it's like, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> then, so it takes two to three days for me to, oh, yeah. like, wow, you know, and especially working with the community and, you know, I'm always talking to people. I'm always working with people. I'm always engaging. Yep. Mm. So it takes a toll on the soul, subhanAllah. So after two to three days, you start benefiting. That's why you can't do it for two days. Some people, you can, like it's mm. good. Yep. Nothing, something is better than nothing. But that um, ritual that I've started, it did not start with a week like that. It started with having an hour a day on my own mm. where I have nothing. So you build on that. You know. So for those of you listening, not everybody can go for a week. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's course. a privileged position. <laughs> oh yeah, we have to uh, say it as it is, subhanAllah. Yeah. So I wasn't able to do that when my kids were younger, for example. Mm. Now my kids aren't, alhamdulillah, they're, you know, my youngest is 11, they take, you know, so I can do that once a year and I know, and they know how important that is for me and for them. You come back better, you just refilled and yeah. and you don't put goals or plans in that week. Actually, I have no plans. You just say, mm. take it as it comes. It's going to exist, yeah. And Allah will guide me. And it's the best ever. Yes. Highly mm. recommend it, but yeah. you have to disconnect. You can't be on your own with your phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not on your own or talking to other people. So, mm. alhamdulillah. And that's something that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. The khulwa and Ghazali did. You know, you yeah. just disconnect. Slow down. Mm. Solo. Is there anything else that you do to ground yourself? I, uh, the athkar, morning and evening athkar, are, are non-negotiables. Mm. You know, and I think, you know, I, I sound like a broken record for the sisters who are listening maybe to this, because <laughs> that's all I talk about. Athkar, sabah and masa, morning and evening athkar, plus athkar. Um, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi this is one of the things that he did every single day till he died. And we don't give it, it's like the athkar are like a shield for you for the day. They're like the source of power. They give you protection, they give you light, they give you guidance, they give you... Uh, you know, protection from hasad, from ayn, from shayateen, in shayateen al-jinn. Like, so I don't know how I can go on a day without morning and evening athkar. I highly, highly recommend. Um, There's so much reward in morning and evening athkar. They keep you grounded. A day without athkar is like a lost day for me. 
So I highly recommend that brothers and sisters wow. listening to this. Mm-hmm. You ca- you cannot afford to live a day with that morning and evening. Yeah. It's like somebody telling you, I'm going to give you $5 million a day. You just have to go to this room and get that. And you're like, no. That, we, we can't even compare the other car. Yeah, to yeah, but yeah, would they, w- isn't it crazy? You're like, yeah. oh, who would... Who, that's a bit We don't insane. value it the same. Yeah, we don't value it. Mm. But Athkar, it's more than that. It's just, yeah, alhamdulillah, Rabbil I mean, So Athkar is Sabah al definitely. Yeah, and uh, um, what would you what would you suggest to kind of get them in the door of the morning Athkar? Like, you know what I mean? Like, listen to it, or do they have to read it, or do they have to have the Fortress of Muslim in their pocket? Um, there's you know an app. I, mean? I actually started with the app, Morning and Evening Athkar. There's English app, there's Arabic app. I actually used to put it on play when I... You know, sometimes like, ideally we have to do it after Fajr, the morning ones. Mm. But even even if you miss it after Fajr, that's okay. Because some people miss it and they think, Khalas, it's got, no, you've got to like, do it till Duhr. Mm. So mm. put it on play as you're driving the car. I take the kids to school. We're listening to it, subhanAllah, with them. And then evening Athkar, ideally from Asr time to Maghrib time. Yeah. But again, if you don't do it in that time, do it before you sleep. If you can't do the whole thing, at least do Aytil Kursi and the three Mu'awidat. Mm. The, you know, the Mu'awidat and the Qul uh, Allah Ahad Al-Ikhlas. So, um, you know, have a basis, have a standard as well, that and uh, but just don't let them pass you by. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they came down for a purpose of protection for us and to give us that, they're like a weapon. You know, go a day without the athkar is like, you know, I think of all of us as warriors on this battlefield. Of dunya. <laughs> Wallah. And that. for you to go on the battlefield without your shield, without your armor, without your weapon, Asking what's going to happen to you in yeah, the first yeah. minute? You're, You're asking for it, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> like a sahim of, you know, uh, an arrow of anything can just knock you out. Mm. We can't afford to do that. We're too weak to rely mm. on ourselves and our strengths. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Definitely. And that's what the athkar do for you. They're divine insurance. Definitely. There's um, the concept of keeping things simple. Mm. I don't know that it's something that you preach yourself in regards to life or in general. Mm. Um, the deen, and uh, subhanAllah, every time I think about it, um, there's actually a quote from Bruce Lee. I know I've drained this quote probably. Bruce Lee, Keep saying there's nothing it, to do with the deen. <laughs> yeah? But Bruce Lee said there's nothing, there's no difference between the beginner and the master because everything is simple. But for the person who's in the middle, who's on his journey to becoming a master, everything is very difficult. Yes. Yeah. Because they complicate it. And yeah. I, I always look at, for example, um, when I was on the road to the deen, I'm still on the road, subhanAllah, but initially in the, in the early days, it was always like, I have to watch this speaker's corner and this, and I have mm. to be able to rebut yeah. why Jesus is a prophet and not God. Yeah. And I'm like, hang on a second. How's my salah, you know? Mm. How's my how's my CM? How's my, am I Basics. even praying sunnah? Yeah. You know what I mean? And mm. and um, what what would you kind of have like as a, as a basic checklist for every Muslim who's beginning that journey? You know what I mean? Beginning the journey, um, we, we again, the example is not me, it's the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How did he begin with the Sahaba? The kalima, la ilaha illallah, I think we are disconnected from the basics of aqeedah. Just seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that we do. Seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day, not just in the salah, but in when I go outside, when I look at the sky, when I reflect on everything. Just having anything good, it's from Allah. You know, I got a good grade because of Allah. I'm able to speak to you now because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I was having this conversation with Najla on the way that it's none of it is us. So just that mm. love, knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Knowing who Allah is. Mm. Do we know Allah? Do we truly know Allah? I think we focus on the, as if deen is like a checklist. <laughs> but that's not how, there's all the ahkam, the hijab, the salah, all came afterwards. After, after, mm. like in the deen. Was it about, know your Rabb. If you truly knew your Rabb, not here, not in your mind, not in your head, in your heart. Mm. You had that connection. Mm. That's where you start. Everything will just get easier then. Because, you know, nowadays people make dua and they're still stressed. And worried, then why are you making du'a? You know, when you're making du'a to the, you know, you have tawakkul. They say, I have tawakkul on Allah. Do we have tawakkul on Allah when we're, they don't, they cannot coexist in the same heart. Yeah. Fear and tawakkul cannot coexist. So then we're saying it, but we're not, are we feeling it? And that starts with raising ourselves like children from the age of zero to 12, for 12 years at least, which is what the Rasul did with the Sahaba for the first 13 years in Mecca. Just connect to Rabbil Alameen. See him through everything. Mm. You know, see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get to know him through his names. Al-Rahim, Al-Wadud, mm. Al-Ghafoor, Al-Azim. Just live with that, subhanAllah. And with the basics. So, you know, non-negotiables, I like to call them. There has to be, there has to be a list of non-negotiables that you go by in a day. You know, and if you don't impose that on yourself, who's going to do that for you? Mm. you know, and, and that's different for everybody. But we have the basics, which is, of course, the salah. You know, we have to start with the salah. Even if you don't feel like it, pray. 
you know, make that your non-negotiable. Athkar are non-negotiable. Good company should be a non-negotiable. Mm. Um, dua non-negotiable. As you're driving, talk to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah, that's definitely. I actually quite enjoy like thinking about um, like just how, in general, Subhanallah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made like everything so simple for us. It's like. We complicate it. Do you know we what do. I mean? We, we complicate it. Like I was going to say that, honestly. Oh, we yeah. do complicate it. That's a topic. Like, I, I actually, it's sad how nowadays people don't want to engage even in the deen, even the youth, because it's too much. Yeah. I can't. Wallahi. But we're telling ourselves that. No one's telling us that. We're telling ourselves that. Yeah. We, we, we're because of our difficult. upbringing, because of yeah. the societal things that we have absorbed. This did not yeah. come out of nowhere. Yeah. But this was not the way that the Rasul preached the deen. Yeah. You know, there was no pressure. If it, It's not supposed to feel heavy. Mm. This is good, you know. We're supposed to want the good, but we put all these restrictions. Like, just as you guys were speaking, Subhanallah. I remembered my husband. He's a GP, so he had one of his patients. She is a ninety. She was ninety. That was like ten years ago. Ninety-year-old woman, who you know, every time she comes to see him, she speaks to him about Islam. She's interested in Islam. She's read. She's very. She was, yeah. mashallah, like a, you know, <laughs> out of knowledge. But then she told him once, like, I'm actually I believe in Islam, but I can't become Muslim because it's too much to do. Oh yeah, oh, and you know, of course, you're not spe- supposed to speak to your patients about faith yeah, <laughs> in yeah, this yeah, country. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but we're living anyway, so it's all good. Yeah, your blood um, <laughs> yeah, your blood you know, you don't bring in the deen, but she was asking, yeah. Yeah. Subhanallah, and um, she just felt that I'm 90. If I become Muslim, do I have a hijab? Do I have to pray? Do I have to fast? And you know, my husband, I was like, he gave her a fatwa. Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa taala make it <laughs> forgive him and reward mm-hmm. him. He just said, you know what? Just take the ticket. For now, don't worry about anything else. What's a ticket? La ilaha illallah. Like the way you phrased it. Yeah. We all yeah, just hold that ticket. Subhanallah. And yeah. then, that you know, start not with that. Start with that. Yeah. Don't worry about everything else because with La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, if a person has that in their heart, and they utter those words, you know, they will enter Jannah ultimately. Inshallah, we know that from many hadiths. Mm. So let's start. You know, people get scared to even. Because it's too much. Just start. Just just hold on to the ticket. Definitely. Inshallah. Definitely. Inshallah. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like an easing feeling. Subhanallah. It is. I've yeah. been reflecting the whole time she's speaking. Subhanallah. It's beautiful. Honestly, it's really. It's a great. Some great advice. People, our listeners, are gonna be hearing even for ourselves as well. Oh, definitely. And for me as well. It's a yeah. reminder. We all need the reminder. We subhanallah. do. We don't. We don't realize how often we need the reminder. Sometimes you can be in a state where it's like. Stuff like that. I don't mean like oh we don't we shouldn't do our sunnah and that, but then you feel like you're at this high level, thinking that you're gonna stay there, mm. but then life gets the better of you. You but get that, busy with things because we have put those conditions, brother, on us. Mm. Subhanallah, and and that's not our deen. I had this question asked in a talk we had two days ago. Subhanallah, in Sydney, um, at the UMA, S- a sister asked sent a private message. I have dips in my faith, and sometimes I feel like I'm a horrible human being. Mm. How do I wh- how do I deal with that? It's normal. It's mm-hmm. actually normal to feel this way. No, actually, it's normal. Because if you're always on the high, then you're not a human being. You're an angel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you're many. You're, yeah. you're, you're not normal. <laughs> you're not normal. The Rasulullah said in many hadiths, and, so. and we've got evidence in our deen that the faith has to go up and down. Mm, like, so. you know, when you think, I'm sure you've all seen you know, in the movies, uh, those heart monitors, mm. the physical heart yeah. monitor, you know, yeah. when it goes up and down, up mm. and down. Mm-hmm. If that line was to go straight, what happens? Flat what is line. that? What's going on to the pers- with the person? Mm. Dead. Dead. They're gone. Uh. So, um, and if it keeps going up and down very, very fast, so the idea is just like a physical heart, it needs to go up and down. Your spiritual heart needs to go up and down. It's and the Rasul mentions this in the hadith. He calls it shirra. You know, to go a peak and then you go to a, you drop. But in the hadith, he said that man, he called it shirra. Man kana shirratahu fillah. Like even hatta the peak. Because some people go to the peak and they go, they become really like a, it goes a bit too much. It becomes yeah. a bit too much as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it still has to be with the boundaries with the deen. And even the dip, he said, even if you go down, stay within the line. So um, I pray, I fast. So I'm, uh, I'm just going to do my basics, yeah. but I'm not going to be doing that. Just even mm-hmm. if I'm in a, in a low, even if I go down, I'm gonna not g- maybe I'm not going to be able to do the Quran and the Athkar and mm-hmm. the Dua. These are all bonuses. They're not compulsory, by the way. So in my peak, I will do those things. When I dip, at least I'm going to maintain Definitely. the basics. That's crucial for mm. us to realize. And and we are like the Sahaba as well. May Allah make us like them, oh, inshallah, yeah. when they actually came to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi with this very question. They said, Ya Rasulullah, when we are with you, we feel like we're, we're on top of the clouds. We're, mm. We feel our faith is high. We feel mm. amazing. But we leave you. <laughs> yeah. 
And then he goes down to the dunya and our work mm-hmm. and our wives and our children and uh, and he said that's that's the iman. It's normal. It's normal. That's faith. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Validating that. Subhanallah. Acknowledging the humanity that they mm-hmm. had and and we have. Mm-hmm. It's also amazing confident to know that even living our day-to-day lives subhanallah mm-hmm. is considered ibadah in the right context, 100%. you know what I mean? And in those times Brother Suhail, and mm. in those times, the Rasul said that towards the end of times, which we established that we are <laughs> early yeah. on, uh, the, he said in a hadith also that people in this time will be rewarded as 50 Sahaba for just doing the basics because it's going to be hard. That's crazy. Uh, you might be thinking, uh, we underestimate that like we're not, you know, um, but he said that there's going to come a time where the reward of us will be like 50 sahaba because they have the rasul they have so all of, we don't have any of that yeah mm-hmm. we're on our own we're in we're living in societies that attack everything that we stand for you know muslims are not doing well around the world we're being you know there's oppression there's injustices we're being killed everywhere true muslim mm-hmm. lands there's no muslim countries anyway there's muslim populated lands but no muslim countries so it's hard there's no leadership mm. there's no organizations there's no institutions there's no systems have are broken whether we want to accept that or not, we're living in broken systems. Mm. And that's so hard. Yeah, definitely. Hence the reward. Mm. Yeah, definitely, subhanAllah. And you're right, it is like holding on to hot coals, subhanAllah. Yeah. Everywhere you go and you turn, yep. even though you're trying to be a good brother or a good sister, subhanAllah, Very bang. hard, very you hard. But it's okay, as long as we come back. Yeah. So, Sirat al-Mustaqim, if we go, you know, get off that, we turn, let, just come back. Yes. It's never too late. As long as you breathe, it's never, it's never too late to come back. No matter what we do, no matter how many times we do the same sin, no matter how, whatever it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives everything. Even if we keep making the same sin a million times, just come back. Mm. Repent and return to Allah and He will forgive you, guaranteed. Inshallah. Um, yeah, so let's let's talk about the hijrah. Oh, uh, hijrah. Yeah. I didn't, haven't spoken about the hijrah publicly <laughs> except that I told people I am leaving, but I didn't share the reasons. Yeah. So yeah. what would you guys like to know? Well, I oh, want to know why Turkey. Yeah, <laughs> Turkey. Yeah. Out of all Turkey, we actually, my husband and I, we've been, ha- we've had this hijra idea since we got married 18 years ago. Mashallah. So when we were engaged, we said we have to leave the West. <laughs> when we don't know, but we just put that. Yeah. We put that seed. We put that intention. Subhanallah. Yeah. And um, whenever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala decrees that for us, let it be the case. And it happened so that three years ago we decided, خلاص, this is it. And because it takes time you to plan it's not mm. like let's pick ourselves <laughs> it's not easy to do that so it has been in the making for the last three years actual preparations and planning so that yeah. inshallah when we go because we've got kids and whatnot yeah. Yeah. so alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Why, turkey was one of the three four countries we had shortlisted okay. um as a palestinian there's no i don't have a country to go back to inshallah yes. allah frees al-aqsa and yeah. we can all go and Allah be Allah there and inshallah and pray at al-aqsa in the liberated palestine but at, uh, you know now it's uh, we can't i can't go to palestine and live i can only go on a um, visa, although my grandparents and my father and everybody is, that's where the roots are, mm. but alhamdulillah. Mm. So we shortlisted Jordan, Qatar, Malaysia, and Turkey. Yeah. Again, um, mm. they're not perfect Muslim societies. There's, you know, Turkey is a secular country anyway, um, but we want to be around a Muslim populated land mm. where the majority are Muslim in, Wahideen. Mm, definitely. Um, so yeah, that's. And they're your preferences, yeah. MashaAllah. Okay, so is this, I'm, I'm curious to know as well with your. Your academy as well. How mm. is that going to continue? What's going to be happening? For, like you from Turkey, are you going to be still helping out, contributing? Inshallah, inshallah, bi You mm. know, I I love the dua of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. Fajalani mubarak and aina ma kuntu. May Allah make us blessed wherever we are. Mm. So the believer is a blessed person wherever they are. It's not the place that we are in. It's not the earth. It's not. You can be blessed in prison and do good <laughs> mm. when you're locked up, honestly. So mm. it's not about the space, and we are all travelers on this earth. Um, we're not meant to be attached to earth itself, per se. Our, we are attached to our purpose, and we are attached to our mission, which is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever we are, wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us, because we mm. are all travelers. We're all That's going. True. Nobody's like here. Mm. Like This is not the final destination. The final destination, inshallah, in Jannah. Mm. That's where Shall. the actual Ya Rabb make us all from Ahl al-Jannah. Mm. But in this mm. dunya, even the Sahaba, when you read their seerah, um, they would be born in a place, but they die somewhere else. Which again, the scholar said is a reflection that their intention was to always, it's all about spreading the faith. And sometimes you need to grow outside of that space that mm. you're in. And so people outgrow certain areas, certain jobs, certain spaces, not in an arrogant way, like I've outgrown this community. I need yeah. to leave. It's not like that. But it's like you need 
um, sometimes other places to learn because you sometimes you can learn. خلاص, I've learned all I can learn here. Yeah. And I've given all I could give here. Yeah. And it you know you need to have wisdom to know when to leave. When, when to, to move somewhere else. Yeah. And Allah encourages that in the Quran and in mm. the seerah of our Rasul that Salam. this was their way of living, like nomads. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just mm. keep, you know, Allah's alam takun ardullahi wasi'a. Isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's earth vast for you to travel and learn and, you know, experience mm. different things and learn new things, subhanAllah. So inshallah, that's that's the intention for Allah's sake, ya Rabbi. May Allah make it hijrah for his sake. It's not easy. It comes with struggles, yeah. a lot of it, because yes. we're I literally uprooting ourselves and all that we know. Yeah. Yeah. But inshallah, anything for Allah's sake, I believe that Allah will, will you know, accept it and make it inshallah Allah easier. Allah. Is, is there a goal to come back or? It, that's not it. to the West. Okay, subhanAllah. Not to the West, yeah. No. So, um, so maybe to another Muslim now. We're going to yeah. see how it goes for the year or two in Turkey. But if uh, not, we might just go somewhere else. But I, inshallah, visiting, but not. Yeah. You know, I'm a Hijra advocate, so mm. I don't want to get into it because I know this is something that you know I understand. Also, it's a privilege; not everybody can. This yeah. is not yeah. for everybody. Sorry. Some people they've they've got really nowhere to go back to, mm. and they've got no option due to financial reasons. They have to stay. So everybody's case is different, but as long as we mm. have the intention, I think it's important. Yeah, just to put that intention when Allah, Allahu Alam. Mm. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Is uh, you've been learning Turkish and all that kind no, of no, stuff? No, no, no. I'm not planning. That's the thing. I just can't be bothered. I'm going to be 40 next in two months, and I'm like, Khalas, <laughs> you know, I've learned enough languages. In <laughs> I don't want more than that. Yeah, sure. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. What Good. languages? I, I know English, Arabic, and Spanish. You speak Spanish? Hablo español? Yeah. Yo hablo también. Oh, yeah. mashallah. What did you learn? So I, learned, yeah, I was in Granada for ah, a few Granada. weeks. I've only ah. learned for about two, three weeks. Ah. So I'm still at the beginning and stuff. But Hablas yeah, Espanol también, mashallah. Sí, That's alhamdulillah. amazing. Alhamdulillah. 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 Yeah. It's a beautiful language. I learned it at it school is. and at university. I did it for like mashallah. seven years. Yeah. So yeah, we traveled to Spain just before COVID and I was just so nice showing off in front of my husband <laughs> and the kids and ordering the food and like, ah. <laughs> That's not. That's the only time I used it. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you believe they speak very fast? You've they been do. They've for a got while? different accents. Yeah, yeah. Let's, people in Spain speak different from people in Mexico. Yeah, you know, do, South America. They yeah, they've got different accents. And I'll tell you a funny story. At school, when I was growing up, yeah. I actually used to write my diary. I write diary, my journal. I used to journal in Spanish, so my sisters don't read what I'm writing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, yeah. So my entire journal was. <laughs> and now, because I forgot a lot of the Spanish I learned, yeah. I have no idea <laughs> when I opened those journals. Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh I need god. to send them to someone to translate them. Like, oh my god, what am I saying here? Sometimes I'd like highlight and, and color things and like mm. as if it's something, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the earth is, is subhanAllah. Mm. Um, so now I don't understand my own journals. SubhanAllah, yeah, Google, have, yeah. Google Translate. No, I can't trust anyone to even translate. <laughs> yeah. It's probably like, you know, youth stuff, 16 years yeah, old, yeah, I was 15. I'm yeah, sure it was just enough. about someone at school or. <laughs> yeah, yeah. SubhanAllah. You'll be surprised when you go back to Turkey how many Spanish tourists are. Oh, ah, really? Yeah, pick it up. SubhanAllah. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a plus about Turkey as well. It's the geographically where it is, it's, you know, allows you to be traveling more as well. And that's something I, you know, yeah. to go to Umrah, yeah. to be close to visit Palestine, to go to Europe. And that's something we've been, inshallah. Planning to do when it's very hard here. We're so far. It's an island, yeah, it is. It takes it you is three days to recover from the trip, and then three yeah. a week to get back to the sleeping hours. Uh, alhamdulillah. That's why I encourage people to go travel and stay a bit longer as well, because yeah. we feel so far away, and you need to experience being on that side of the world, yeah. so close to other countries and cultures. We are far away, and yeah. that that you know that you know it's good and it's bad because mm. you're detached from you are mm. whether we like that or not. We're just really far, and mm. that impacts our way of life. And I feel like. You know, when you go travel and you come back, you, you look at everybody and how they're living. We're just living in a bubble. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, we are. We're 100%. living in a big bubble that needs to be popped. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, like it's... I was telling Ali last time when I went overseas, came back. Different. And I went back to the same community. Actually, even having a hiatus for three, five years, it's mm. a three to five years from my community itself. Mm. I left and then I came back. Everybody's still the same. Yeah. Same bubble, same circles, same everybody's religion. doing the same thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's it's something that people should, even for a year or two, why not go to a Muslim population? Like, give yourself that chance if you can. Mm. Yeah. You know, what, Alhamdulillah, as I mentioned, we're privileged. Like, the worst that could happen, you don't like it, you come back. Just give yourself that experience. Go out mm. there, Allah exactly, subhanahu yeah. you learn new culture, you see new people, you expand your mind. You you exp do. And, and yeah. you can only do that sometimes not just from books. We're talking about halaqat. It's living in different areas and with different people. And, ex you know, that literally expands you as a human being. Mm. You know, and the more mm. expanded you are, the more you'll be able to manage and deal and make better decisions and choices and manage with your trials as well because you've got a bigger bucket that can mm. contain more. And even, even if you don't want to go, like, stay there longer, you come back super grateful. Yeah. 
Yes. So like I traveled for a few months and I came back and like Alhamdulillah. I love Australia. I love where my family is. It's, a, it's amazing. Yeah. We, you know, we have so much here. Alhamdulillah. Mm. It's a blessing. Alhamdulillah. And yeah. you know, just being grateful for it is so important. We yes. get used to those blessings. Definitely. Mm. We forget that we have those blessings. And there's actually a, a Ratib bin Nabulsi says that there is a sin called a ta'awud ala nima to get used to the nima. Oh really? Yeah, he, he that's what he says that it's yeah. that because you're just not grateful like you take it for granted that you get safety that you wow, have okay. food that you have and you know people start focusing on that which they don't have but they're so used to the, the blessings that you became so used to it. Subhanallah, yeah. That you're not grateful for it anymore. And everything is alone from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is alone from him whether the people in our lives, the money we have, the status that whatever. And Allah will take it back so we have to be grateful for it before it's taken back. It all goes back to him. All of it, mm. even our health, our knowledge, our people, everything. I think just because we're conscious of time, I don't know if you have any more questions. I got one more. You yeah, go for it. <laughs> if what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, you gotta set it up better than that. Come on, bro. <laughs> you gotta set it up. Yeah, just tell her. You know, like we have a curveball. We usually throw at all <laughs> of our guests. Okay. And a lot of times we don't tell them we're gonna ask them this question, okay. so we can see them think. It's the best thing. Okay. Because everybody's. Uh, <laughs> Everybody has to dwell on this question a little bit more, and if somebody does it quickly, yeah. Yeah. then we're like, okay, you're probably aerating. Okay. <laughs> but um, a- anyways, so subhanAllah, go ahead, Ali. Yeah, so I'll say it again. <laughs> Advice for younger self. Um, Your younger self. My younger self? Yes. Trust the process. Everything is going to be okay, inshallah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. Beautiful. Yeah. Trust the process in the sense that when you're young, you kind of want to see where you're going. And you won't be able to see. And we stress about, oh, you know, where's the path taking me? Trust Allah. The process, I mean trust Allah because he created the process. Because, And just walk on the path that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you don't see the end of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will just, it will light up as you walk. You can't sit here and see it all. It doesn't work this way. Hmm. So as you're walking, sometimes you think you have to keep going straight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the door on the right and you enter that. Yeah. Out of nowhere. So just trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't trust yourself. We're so into ourselves. We're so into our heads. And people like the culture that we're living in, it's about me and self-esteem. Mm. And I don't even believe in self-esteem and the self. I tell sisters, don't trust yourself. In the, in, in the morning and evening athkar, we're supposed to say, Allahumma la takilni ila nafsi tarfata'ain. The Rasul used to say, do not allow me, ya Allah, to myself even a blink of an eye. Who are we? What do I know to trust myself? My, my self-esteem, self-esteem, again, don't like the word certainty, comes from Trust in Allah, not trust in myself, because I can. I don't trust. I don't know enough to trust mm, myself, or to make the right decisions, or to even, you know, trust Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He will get you through whatever that you're gonna experience, because it's all written, and if He's given it to you, you're gonna get through it, inshallah. Amazing, subhanallah. That is an amazing way to cap off the podcast, yeah. mashallah. Like I want to. Uh, I want to give you the la- like one one. Uh, I'm gonna open the floor to you, inshallah, so you can. Um, maybe there's one thing that people need to know. Or there's something that you, you want to push across, inshallah. Just I'll give you the floor for you to... I don't know what to say. <laughs> 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 Alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, just, uh, you know, just to, to look at this dunya in akhira goggles, you know, everything will change. Everything mm. will make different, you know, everything will mean differently. You know, my one of my teachers used to tell me, when we used to go to her and complain about the kids, the washing, cleaning, life, my husband, this and that. She would just look at us and say, is this going to matter in the grave? And if the oh. answer is no, then it doesn't matter here. That was her measure. That was her motto. So that's what I share. Oh. And I'd like to end with to you know everybody listening, whatever you're going through, this is the reality of dunya. It's absolutely normal. And um, as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you, that's what matters. And if it's not going to matter in the grave, then it, don't give it too much here either. That's an amazing way to finish. Subhan, <laughs> Jazakallah Khairan for coming yeah, on. Thank Honestly, you so much. Pleasure is all else. No, my pleasure. Jazakallah <laughs> Khairan. Thank we'll, you so much. We'll Did we cover? We covered. Alhamdulillah. Is there a good conversation? Yeah. I don't know what, you know. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do a quick one. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And inshallah, all of Sister Dahlia's um, uh, details and contact information will be on the screen. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so